Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our heart to heart discussion for for today. Um, I'm Pastor Andrew Hill of the 11th Street Baptist Church, and this is my lovely wife. I'll let her introduce herself. You don't want to introduce me, Pastor. I can introduce you. This is my <laughs> lovely wife, Dana Hill. <laughs> She crazy. <laughs> no, or maybe I'm crazy. No. How, <laughs> welcome everyone. I am Dana Hill. Like said, <laughs> he is extra silly today. But, okay. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> well, anyway, like I said, welcome to Heart to Heart. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our uh, session out today with, with, with a brief prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll jump right off into it. Yes. All right. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to study your word and show ourselves approved yes. unto you, Lord. Yes, we thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do in this session, Lord. We ask that we be anointed from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. Mm -hmm. But don't anoint us for our own glory. Anoint us for your glory, Lord. Mm -hmm. We want you to receive all the glory for everything that we do and everything that we say here in this session and always in our lives, mm -hmm. Lord. We thank you for all you've done for us, Lord, but we realize that even if you never do another thing for us, oh. you've already done enough in our lives, Lord. Jesus. We thank you for everything that you've ever done for us, and we ask that you continue to protect us and watch over us and order our footsteps, Lord, so that we can be better in service and better in the business that we do for yes. you, Lord. We want to do everything that we do as pleasing unto you, Lord. So we're asking that you take control of our situations, take control of our lives, and help us to follow you and do all of the things that you require of us. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Fantastic. On the last lesson, we talked a little bit about the uh, uh, false teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked a lot about the false teachers, and we said we were going to conclude uh, this uh, discussion of false teachers on on today because we had some other questions we were going to jump jump into uh, in future uh, meetings. But if we don't get all the way through through the day, then we'll try to finish that up, up on the next uh, lesson. But uh, on the last time, we mentioned that there were 22 uh, different topics that had uh, come to light, you know, based on. Uh, some readings that we had done in the book mm -hmm. of Jude, and uh, we began to discuss those those particular things from from my side, and then you had some other scriptures that, and things that you wanted to introduce too, as, as well to to the people. So we'll we'll go ahead and get as far as we can this time, mm -hmm. but knowing that we'll conclude everything on this uh, discussion of false teachers, which is a very important topic. Yes. And that's the reason why I wanted to continue to deal with it until we, we finished it up because we know that that we have to be on guard, especially in these last days, of being led astray by someone. Right. And that's where false teachers come in is, is that even the very elect of God may be fooled right. at some point in, in, in these last days and times. So we want to make sure that we are not fooled right. by anyone. And that we're not led astray. We want to be ready when he comes back. Most definitely. Yes. You agree? Yes. Yeah. The best yeah. way to be ready is to know the word for yourself. Yes, right, right. Yeah. And, it, mm -hmm. and if you get ready, you don't have to rush to, to get yeah. Well, if you stay ready, yes. you don't have to rush to get ready. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. There you go. Wasn't that sugar free? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that, man. Yeah, back in my rap days, sugar free. Yeah, if you stay I don't know you know. <laughs> Okay, all right. Let let me go ahead and, uh, and try to run through uh, as many of these as I possibly can, and then uh, let's run through the scriptures you know that that, that you looked yeah, up and, yeah. and some of the parts of the lesson. But uh, the first thing was that false teachers are to be opposed by believers, mm -hmm. and then you know we know that with them being opposed by believers. Um, believers are to contend for the faith against false teachers. Mm -hmm. And it said, the characteristics and judgment of false teachers show how horrible false teaching is to God. He considers false teachers to be the worst of all men upon earth, mm -hmm. and he issues the most severe warning to them, warnings that far exceed 
the warnings to other men. And some of the scriptures that I, I, I pointed out with that one section was Matthew 5 and 19, Matthew 18 and 6, Matthew 23, 13 through 16, Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9, and 2 Peter, 2 chapter, 20 through 22. Okay. So that was the the the, the first uh, little bit of uh, characteristics that it, it mentioned about uh, false teaching. Um, and you can you can uh, jump in any in moment, interrupt me. You know, interrupt me. I don't want to interrupt you. I mean, hey, look, no. uh, 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 you got some good stuff. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yes, okay. yes, okay. You, you got good things, you know. So you just anytime you want to. Uh, the second one was um, uh, about false teachers was that they creep into the church secretly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that means we don't see them all the time when they come in there. <laughs> Some of them come through the back door, you know. Some of them slither in while service is going on, you know, the false teachers. The, uh, the notes, uh, and, and these notes that I took, the reason that I took it from Jude was it was a lesson that we had in a uh, seminary class, and I thought it was a very good lesson, so I wanted to share, you know, some of the things that, that we had gone through in uh, some of the seminary classes that I took mm -hmm. back in the past. And uh, this thing about them creeping into the church, it yeah. says that they creep into the church unknowingly, yeah. which means we, we, don't, we don't even really know when they come in. They are not God-called teachers. They choose to teach in the church as a profession or as a way to serve people oh, yeah. and to teach the morals and virtues of this world. The idea is that they entered the church unnoticed. <laughs> they did not believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God who came to earth to save man. Therefore, they did not belong in the church but they joined it for the benefit and opportunities it brought them. Yeah. They accepted the teachings of Christ, believed that he was a great religious leader, but they denied his deity, which means they denied him truly being God. Yeah. You know, and I want to point out a, a little, little part, just real brief, brief about them joining church I mean, joining the whole situation for the benefit and opportunities it bought them. A lot of people don't think that there are benefits and opportunities mm -hmm. to ministry. Um, but there are things that happen behind the scenes with it people. Really and they may not be the right benefits and opportunities that we're seeking. Right. You know, because uh, there are some people who only teach and only preach the word of God for glory to themselves. They like the way the crowd yells at them. They like, they like the way people tell them, tell them, boy, you show in the book. You know, they, they like all of those kinds of things because they're in themselves and they're in pride at that particular point in time. So we have to be aware of those who take pride in, in this because we're not supposed to take that pride for ourselves no. or the glory for ourselves no. because what we're talking about is the gospel of Christ. We're talking about him mm -hmm. and, and, and the good news of him dying and then rising again and, and uh, buying us the right to salvation, the right to the tree of life. Right. Uh, and, and, and in our discussion of, of that, we need to understand that we are, are, are not to be puffed up in ourselves. Right. You, you understand what oh, I'm saying? Definitely. Saying that uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're not supposed to take any kind of a, a a form of pride in our in ourselves yeah. as if man, I sure was teaching that lesson, man. Woo, I got down, man. You know, <laughs> you know how we do, they man. Better be careful before Earth become the only heaven that they know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of people that don't get in. Yeah. You know, what they yeah. what I used to hear the old, older folks used yeah. to say. They said they gonna miss heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and that's you know, I just was like, I don't miss it. You know, and, but now I understand what they yeah. meant when they said, hey, you're going to fool around and miss heaven. Yeah. You know, you're going to think that you're going. Yes. And you're going yes. to be passed on by, you know. 
you're going to be passed on by because you never really knew him. Like where it talks about them saying that some of them do know that he was a great leader. And they that's what they're thinking, you know, is in a human form only, you know, that he was a great person. He said some great things. Like some people say, oh, he's a prophet. You know, he tried to minimize. just a prophet. Yeah. You know, yeah, he is a prophet. He's all of that, man, and even yeah. more. You yeah. know, he is a great leader, mm -hmm. but he's that and more. You know, because he is also God Himself. He's fully. Mm -hmm. That's fully. That's, uh, that, yeah. that that gets me discussing that part. Mm -hmm. You know, some scripture that I had in that part was First Timothy four one through two, Titus one and sixteen. Romans 16 and 18 and 2 Corinthians 11 chapter 13 through 15 which I'll say this says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ yeah. and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers it said Satan's ministers yeah. now, if his ministers, his ministers yeah. also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, Bless. whose end shall be according to their works. <laughs> that right there said enough. Yeah. That, that their that. end yeah. is going to be according to their works. So they did bad works. They're going to come to a bad end. Mm. Woo. Mm. Man, that's that's good stuff. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, I oh, have a few. You had well, something okay. on that? No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. I, was, I thought I did, but I don't. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Uh, the third one is uh, the third one is that they are destined to judgment, and that's what we we talk about. They're in store for something, you know. So we don't have to take matters into our own hand yeah. to to deal with them. Pray for them that they'll yeah. come out of that state, that that spirit will get out of them that that's causing them to uh, teach falsely. Uh, or follow the, uh, you know, following these false principles uh, or, or whatever they're doing that is not of God, go ahead and pray that that spirit will get out of them so that they can get on the straight and narrow and they can do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Because our desire is for no one to perish. We want everyone to be able to make it. Yes. That's our desire is that even the one that, that I almost, you know, uh, Said it in terms of how we say it on the street, but but <laughs> you know it almost just came out, you know. But <laughs> some of them uh, 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 bother us and worry us and and uh, you know cause problems for us. But even then, we still have enough love to want them not to perish. A Christian should, but everybody don't. I'm reminded of that story just, when uh, Abraham okay. went went to get locked yeah. and then uh, and even though yes. the city was full of evil people yes, he began to pray uh, to speak to the yeah. Lord about saving a certain amount of them you know yeah. still you know Lord if I could find a certain if I could find 50 good men mm -hmm. will we destroy the city can we save the city? Yes. He wants to save the whole city. He didn't want any he, of them to perish. That's after and, that's yeah. after God's heart. Right. He doesn't desire for us to perish. Mm -hmm. You know, he he gives us that hard right. love. You know, but he doesn't want us to perish. Yeah. You know, he really wants us to succeed in life. He really wants us to succeed in eternal life. Mm -hmm. But it said, false teachers are destined to judgment. They reject Jesus Christ, therefore judgment is waiting for them. God has ordained from the beginning of time that all unbelievers shall be judged. And both Jesus Christ and Scripture teach that the judgment for false teachers is to be far more severe than for other persons. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that, that's one thing that I noticed. Uh, even in the study that I was doing for my sermon this week, mm -hmm. I began to uh, read in Deuteronomy about uh, different blessings that have come to you for being obedient. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that was expressed in that same book of the, the Bible mm -hmm. where it started telling you about the bad things that will happen to you mm -hmm. for not being obedient to the, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
one thing that I noticed is that the bad thing far exceeded the good thing. Oh, yes. yes. And in thinking about that, it made me think about even us as parents. I mean, it, it made me kind of understand why God made it so. You know, God made the bad, the the um, the punishment more severe yes. than the good yes. that would ha happen to you this way because he wanted to push you to the good side. Yes. He wanted to give you some incentive. You, most definitely. For, yes. For not getting this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Don't you get this belt. <laughs> you know, do you remember that? Do you remember when your folks used to say, man? I do. Don't. No, ours was a switch, but go ahead. Don't get that switch. <laughs> I mean, and, and the worst part, they'll tell your brother or somebody to go pick yours out for you. We had to pick our own, so y'all. No. Know. It, so you know, you go. I if I pick my own, you know, I'm going to try to come in with any old thing. There was some rules. Isn't that my, my brother who yeah. who would be sitting over like, oh yeah, man, he'll drag a tree in here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I get it. You know? <laughs> he'll drag a tree and throw it down there. Yeah, you you know? So way. we we cause we stay in, yeah, you know, sure. like yeah, like I'm that. But that that's that's the kind of that's the kind of love. My dad would tell me when he was whooping me mm -hmm. that I mean before it gets started, this is going to hurt me more than, than you. And I never understood that because I was like, it ain't no way that possibly <laughs> hurt him any. You know, yeah. it hurt me a whole lot. Yeah. But it ain't no way it affected him. But it, it does, does affect them. When they love you, they don't want to do that. Yes. You know, that's the farthest thing from what they want to do. They don't take any kind of enjoyment in there. I thought he took enjoyment because of the way he did it. He was, he was very good at it. At, at it, and I thought he took joy from that, but no. it's the same way with God. Yeah. God does he not doesn't take joy. To. He doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want us to go down the wrong road. So he makes it very easy for us to decide to do the right thing. Right. You know, because you don't want this. Right. You don't want me to open the can of punishment. Uh, you want me to open the can of goodness yes. and mercy. But you know, it's, it's some out there that believe mm -hmm. that God is just all kind and he doesn't punish. No, man. He, no, he I'm has just to. It's some because that one really thing I've learned is that God that cannot he's, lie. He's a he's a only a forgiving and loving and oh, kind yeah, God, yeah, but yeah. God is a God of dis, of discipline as well. You well, know, He has to chestize us. Well, people want to believe is. that they want to believe that it's going to be nothing but goodness and mercy and this nice, you know, right, nice side, right. the gentle side. And they need to believe that for themselves because they don't want to do the right thing right. all the time. Exactly. So they yes. want to know that, oh, I'm saved already. You know, I can do this. And oh, God whatever. will forgive me for this. But, and, you know, but if you have that desire that, right? to, that pushes you across all the time mm -hmm. to the bad side, then you have to reestablish whether or not you are truly saved at that point. Because it's not our works that are gonna gonna really show that we're saved or not, you know. Because it said, man, you know, he said that I never knew yeah. knew some of them, yeah. You know, in the end, you know, there are gonna be people that came and said, "Oh, I was on the usher board. You was on the usher board, and you never did try to get to know me the whole time you was in church, you know. Oh yeah, you've been in the church for forty years, and you started so much hate and, and so much dissension." Among your church people, yeah. but you you show served on every committee. Oh, I can I can tell you that because you served on those committees because you wanted to throw some dissension on the committees. You wanted to take charge. It was all about you. It wasn't about me. Yes. So you never tried to get to know me. Right. So depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for you never knew me. Speak. That's what the scripture said. You better speak. That's what the scripture said. That's what it says, but I like the way you put that. Okay. But in some of the scriptures that go along with that uh, part about their judgment is Matthew 5 and 19, Matthew 8, 18 and 6, Galatians 1, 6 through 9, and 2 Peter 2, 20 through 22. Mm -hmm. you, you can go, go ahead and, and introduce something. Oh, let me see. Do you want, do oh, you want to finish up? Oh, oh I, can, I, I can keep going. Or, 
I can. I just wanted to point out some. Uh, yeah, the, some of the same yeah, things. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be some of the, 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 but, the same um, thing. I wanted to point out some of the ways you can identify a false prophet, a preacher or prophet. Um, one way is that they are preachers of the gospel of prosperity. Um, you, we can find that in Matthew 6, 19 and 21. And I got it marked in my Bible, so. And 6, 19, and, um, verses 19 and 21 reads, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth, doth corrupt, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasures is, that's where your heart be also. Mm. So you don't have to worry about the prosperities uh, or, or how you're going to gain them and uh, that the pastor is telling you that this is what God has promised you. Yeah. Um, you. You can know that for yourself by digging, but it, you know, it's not, as you were saying, yeah. it's not about the wealth. Right, you right, know? right, right. Because that's, yeah. the, that's one thing that we have to realize is that we're not saying that that anybody that preaches that we're going to be prosperous uh, mm -hmm. or, or something is, is is wrong, you know, because God intends for us to be prosperous. Mm -hmm. But our idea of prosper, prospering has to, to change and conform with what he's saying. Yeah. It has to be prosperity about heavenly things, mm -hmm. spiritual things. Yes. And, when we think about prosperity, we often yeah. think about money. We do. Okay, we think yes. God's about to bless me with money, you know, because he said, the man I'll just said, I'm going to be prosperous. Yes. Yes. I'm about to get rich, boy. Yes. I'm about to just take this thing. I'm probably, I'm finna, I'm finna drive mm -hmm. off in this brand new car yes. that the Lord finna bless me with. Mm -hmm. But it's not all about material things. When it talks about we're going to have a reward stored up in heaven, we ain't going to have no use for our money. Uh, we ain't going to have no so use over there for our cards. Down. We're not going to have any use right. for any of that stuff. So God is not talking about those things when he's talking about your reward. There are other ways that you can be wealthy other than money and wealthy and, 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 and material things. Ooh. There are other ways that you can be wealthy. You can be wealthy in love. in love. You can be wealthy in the love of your children. Uh, uh, wealthy in children. Wealthy in, in uh, just your wisdom. You can even be wealthy in wisdom. You could, God can bless you with whatever he desires to bless you with. And it, it doesn't always have to be attached to yes. something physical yes. in, in your life. Because yeah. sooner or later, we're going to do away with Thank this you. physical world. Yes. And we're going to have to think about the things that are spiritual that are going to be everlasting in mm -hmm. life. I want to not worry about this physical situation. I don't mean I'm ready to leave this place right, right. now. You know, but when God is ready for me, I want to be secure uh, of where I am going yeah. after that. My reward is laid up in heaven. The reward that I'm really, really yes. trying to get yes. is laid up in heaven. And it doesn't have anything to do with my car. It doesn't have anything to do with my um, my my wealth and money. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with, with, with those whatsoever. material things. Nothing. It has to do with everything that he, he, he has promised me that I'd be able to worship him. I'd be able to rest over there and, and be able to, man, I want to spend all my day just going and saying, he holy. I want to run into the middle of them cherubims when they yell, he's holy, he's yeah. magnificent, he's wonderful. I want to run in the middle of them and say, he's great. <laughs> you know, and they, and they say, yeah. And then they go, they go to start on a whole other things about how wonderful God is. I want to oh, be in there. Goodness. I want to be in that same yeah. number that John saw. Yes. Yes. A number that no man yes. can number. Because chasing That's prosperity here on earth would mm -hmm. cause you to die twice. Mm -hmm. And only live once. Mm -hmm. See, I want to live twice. I want to be up there with you. I want to scream holy, holy, holy. That dealt you know? to the unbelievers yes. and the uh, problematic people. Mm -hmm. 
is a death of eternal damnation. They they will be around, mm -hmm. but they'll be an eternal an eternal yes. torment and damnation. Chasing and after something that there. is only chasing temporal. After, chasing the after money something chases. that is only temporal. The so. money chasers. They like the people that uh, Jesus threw out of the temple that day. You know. These money changers yes, and, yes. and folk that's he uh, sitting here, man, yes. he was like, boy, you know, you corrupted this place, yes. you know. This is sacred ground. This is holy ground. And y'all are in here selling and, and profiting and, and things like that. It's filthy lucre. That's what they used to call that money and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. But Well, uh, another way, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Another yeah. identifier is that uh, the prophet or preacher, false prophet or preacher, would refuse to call out sin for the sake of uh, not wanting to offend others. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can find a uh, related scripture to that in Colossians 3, 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. um, but my small note to that is uh, to ignore sin is to ignore our need for a Savior. And mm -hmm. to ignore the Savior is to reject Him. So we want to be very careful with um, not calling out um Sin for the sake of not offending someone. Okay. okay. You know, um, exactly. you can call it out. You don't have to be nasty about it. You can you can call it out in love. You know, because of concern. You know, for that person. The next identifier that I has had is that some prophets, false prophets, or pastors don't believe in hell or need or the need for repentance. Mm -hmm. They may teach that hell is just figurative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the Bible yeah. says in Isaiah 5 and 14 <laughs> something yeah. different. So I'm going to turn to Isaiah 5 and 14. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read Isaiah. Uh, 5th chapter 14 verse says, that, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and the glory and, the, and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Meaning that there wow. is a hell and there you is. will descend there into hell. Place there is a place. There is a place. So, um, and that's good. That's good. That yes. is real good. That, Do you have anything you want to add to, to that? Oh, no, that, that's solid. That, that's it. <laughs> that, that says it all. When we were talking about, we were just talking about judgment mm -hmm. um, of those false teachers. There is a place you can go. <laughs> you, we we know that it's real now. Okay. You know, we yeah. we know that it's real. You the know, scripture some say it's not. Uh, the hell isn't mentioned in the mm -hmm. Bible, and I'm like, yes, it is. You know, but yeah, I don't like to argue the Bible with people. That's just not something I like to do. But you want to say anything? Yeah, I would. Uh, let me pick up in the the, the fourth uh, the, the the fourth thing that I had here too. Mm -hmm. man. False teachers are ungodly. It said false teachers are ungodly. They do not live like God. They are different from God. Yeah. They have a different lifestyle than what God would have mm -hmm. if he was walking upon earth. God is perfect, moral, pure, just, and loving. Mm -hmm. But false teachers are not moral, pure, just, or loving. They're the opposite. They are deceptive. Mm. Leading people away from the love and purity of God. Yeah. The love and purity revealed in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not teach the truth of God's love and purity mm. demonstrated in Christ. Mm. They profane God and the truth of his love and godliness. Mm. Wow. Some scriptures that it mentioned here, here was Romans 1 and 18, 1 Peter 4 and 18. 2 Peter 2, mm -hmm. 4 through 5, 2 Peter 2, 3 and 7, and Jude the fourth, I guess the fourth verse mm -hmm. uh, of Jude, which we read well, already, on the last time. Already yeah. that. Which we read yeah. on the last time. Hmm. I like that. He says God, God they live a different lifestyle than God. They're ungodly. Mm -hmm. They're ungodly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're uh, ungodly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it says it in the name. They're all ungodly. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the fifth thing is they are licentious. Mm -hmm. And licentious, uh, 
when I looked it up in the, in the dictionary, uh, one of the terms, uh, two of the terms that it used for it is lewd and lasciviousness, which is uh, lewdness. I mean, we we know how people can be lewd. They can they they can be very rude or, or in an evil way, mm -hmm. and and lasciviousness is linked to kind of sexual perversion. Yes. Sexually yeah. immoral. Yes, sexually immoral. That's a that's a good way to put it right there. Mm -hmm. So they are licentious. Mm -hmm. They are uh, immoral. You know, they are living I immoral. And it says they turn the grace of God into that perversion, mm -hmm. that licentiousness. Yes. That's what the false teachers do. They turn they turn the grace of God into that. Number six is that they deny the Lord God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that, that, that they they are ungodly, you know. So they're really teaching in a way to kind of take take that glory and everything away from God. Right. They false teachers deny the only Lord God that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we mentioned that earlier, that they may believe that he was a great leader or mm -hmm. something, but they don't they take away from his deity. Yes. Yeah, they they take away from his godliness, him being God himself. You know, mm -hmm. they they don't believe that, and even their teachings right. reflect that they they don't believe that. There are a whole lot of uh, people that that mm -hmm. they claim to uh, believe in Christ, but some of them believe in Christ as just a man. You know, just right. a person that yeah. lived there, yeah. and he said some good say sayings. You know, he had some good good teaching and stuff like that. But he was just a man, you know, yeah. and uh, and at the end of the day, he 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 couldn't still be alive if he was just a man. That's what they believe, wow. you know, that he died, you know, back then. You know, he was a great prophet. He said the right things. Yeah, yeah, you can go by his teaching or whatever like that. But what about when he when they said in John four, you know, fourteenth uh, chapter? Mm -hmm. When he said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe ye also in me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if I, I can believe in yeah. his teachings, why well, I can't believe in that part? But if you can believe mm -hmm. from the he beginning, said. I'm sorry, if you can believe from the beginning that God created all of us. He mm -hmm. created man and woman, man and his mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. Why is it that he could not create Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Or Jesus Christ could come down? Yeah. Or that he could not, you know, not only do. come down. I'm just saying that's the thing. And, this and, thing that they, they can most people do not they believe, you know, that he cannot come down, dwell among mm -hmm. us. Most he people can't rise again. Most people can't believe that way, you know. And I, I think that th those are the same people that don't believe that there's a, that that God is God. You know that He is the controller of the universe. I mean, people try to explain how the universe. Created itself, and and I mean, we could get all off they into don't, all of look, these. They don't have to worry little, about the false yes. prophet because, first of all, they need to start. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, there they, are they so have many people with their belief that, anyway, that, so. that, that go astray. Yeah, you know, with this uh, this type of a discussion, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the thing that I, I I just say that God is in control of all of it. You know, he's mm -hmm. still in control. He could have made all of us bow down to him and when understand, but he gave us free yeah. will to go yeah. ahead and uh, yes. make these decisions yeah. and, uh, and do these things down here. But in giving us the free will, he still desires for us to choose right. right. I mean, it says in a uh, uh, scripture uh, that uh, uh, before you are the issues uh, of life and death. Mm -hmm. And he said, I would that you would choose life. He really would that you would choose life. And he's not forcing you to. Not, uh, but yeah. he's not going to force you to, because yeah. yeah. these things are right before you, and you got you have to make a choice mm -hmm. yourself. You know, I mean, I I just uh, I uh, I just had, I, had I feel for I feel for so many people that are out there lost like that. I yeah, feel, I, I do feel too. For I them. most definitely do. I feel for them. I mean, it's not, and it's not. I most definitely. It's do. not a disgust. It's it, it it's just really. I'm just. I feel for them. I mm -hmm. mean, because I want them to get it. Pity. I want them yes. to understand yeah. the yeah. understand yeah. the whole yeah. whole ball of wax. But I mean, I know we can't force that on right. on them. Um, 
Number seven was uh, they are sure to be judged. I mean, we talked about that a, a little earlier that they they will go through judgment. Mm -hmm. They're, but it's just telling you that they are sure to be judged. False yeah. teachers are to be judged and condemned. Mm -hmm. Jude speaks directly to the false teachers and to all who follow after them. Remember the judgment of God. You once knew that God judged unbelief. I am reminding you that he does. <laughs> he basically reminded them that that uh you knew back in the, the day that he was going to judge unbelief. He's mm -hmm. talking to these false teachers. You know, they knew because they had come up from among them. They right, were with, right. with them, with and the Israelites. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, uh, and, and that just points to me that, that how, they, how these false teachers just kind of come into your, your congregation or, mm -hmm. or to whatever group you're you're in and, and you kind of unknowingly know because they're all they're some of the same people that were with you all the time that you you've gotten a relationship with that you've been sitting here with talking with them and communing, communing with them mm -hmm. so your tendency is to believe them if they say something you know but you have to be aware of their motives and and, and why they say certain things and and how they say them you know because that false teacher will take you and deceive you with those those words, those same words that you're trusting upon mm -hmm. with them. And, uh, you know, there were many uh, examples that were uh, given with that, that in my notes um, about when Israel, uh, when they uh, were delivered from Egyptian slavery, God judged and punished all the belie unbelievers of Israel. Mm -hmm. Like the ones that kept on com murmuring and complaining, yeah. that was basically a spirit. They had that that spirit of complaining, of, of murmuring mm -hmm. against the, the things. Even wow. though God had delivered them, mm -hmm. that's a that's a slap in the face to him. Yes. That he delivered them, mm -hmm. and they're still out here murmuring and complaining. Right. You know, they murmuring and complaining mm -hmm. about the even when he would give them bread right. from heaven, yeah. they wanted yeah. meat. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. even when they had gotten to, to the Red Sea, oh, we should have stayed back there in Egypt, yeah. you know. But Pharaoh come to kill them, you know. And they're, and they're still sitting here murmuring and complaining. Look at the Lord. Lord, he didn't make a way for us. Now how are we going to get across this water? Then when he get them across the water, you know, and make it part, they still got murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. They murmuring and complaining several times, and then he had, had to uh, deal them with a little punishment from time to time. Yeah. There's there's just uh, so many things that it it pointed out. It pointed out that their sin back then was really idolatry. Because they not surprised. They loved something else more than they well, loved they God. Mm -hmm. You know. Remember when they built a calf, a likeness of him yes. down there when Moses had gone yeah. up to yeah. the to mm -hmm. the mountain? That was idolatry yes. when they built that uh, yeah. that uh that same thing. Good. No, we have a lot of idols now, but you know, yeah, yeah. we put a lot of things before before God. Um, and I hate that we do that. You yeah. know, and a lot of us miss it. We miss it. We we really don't catch what we what we put before him, you know, and it's it's not just things that you can see, it's things that you can't see either. I mean you you utilize all your time for the wrong purposes and you know, stuff like that. You know, we, we idolize things. Yeah. And we miss it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what I hate is that some of us really don't even realize what we're doing. You know? But, okay. Let me. No, I'm not. Let me. I, I get. No, no. That. no. But one of the, another identifier that I have as far as a false prophet is uh -huh. uh, concerned is that. Some false teachers are men pleasers. <laughs> um, <laughs> they preach more to please the ear than to profit the heart. Mm -hmm. um, I got a scripture from Galatians 1 and 10, just like I think you called that out. Galatians 1 and 10, I don't want to go back mm -hmm. over it. Um, yeah. Another one is that... Um, They pay 
pass over the law and the gospel for other things. Um, they desire to be teachers of the law and understand neither what they say or whereof they affirm. And that's 1 Timothy 5 and 7. Um, also, 1 Timothy 6, 3 and 5. And I want to read that one. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, you said I could have your notes, Alfred. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good stuff. You've been doing some digging. I have. I was, uh, as I was reading, I was getting filled up, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, I, that happens so many times, you know. To me, that I can I can get into it, and and it's not just a story to me. It's it's just like the I'll spirit will start dealing yes. with you on what you you getting into, and you kind of feel it. It becomes a part of you. That mm -hmm. word is hidden in your heart at that point. Mm -hmm. But let me see. You can pull it up. You can pull it up the next time you need it. Yes, you'll always need it though. But they say, call him up and tell him what you want. Don't sing it. You're gonna, you're gonna give me no, I ain't going to okay. sing it. I don't, don't want to make people <laughs> shut their cameras off, you know, right in, in here. Okay. It says 1 Timothy 6, verses 3 and 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but doing but doting i'm sorry about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railing evil summary some risings i think some surmises i'm sorry um perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness for such withdraw thyself wow so mm -hmm. They, they they want to be teachers of the law and you want to be a you want to mm -hmm. you want to prophesy you want to you want to pastor mm -hmm. you want to mm -hmm. teach but if he didn't call you mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't run so fast to to do no, that no because you know? of that judgment because of the mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes yeah. when you was talking They'll about be held yes you, most for, mm -hmm. and not just for just yourself but mm -hmm. for the things for, you, for the things that you yes. led others astray in Mm. You'll be held accountable. You will. Well, you you're you're exactly right. And the last one I'm gonna mention tonight, um, mm -hmm. this is one of my favorites, is that they use clever language oh. and appearances <laughs> to disguise themselves. <laughs> Wolves and sheep's yeah. clothing. Mm. Um they use uh colorful words, their dangerous principles mm -hmm. and their very fair speeches and plausible pretenses with high notions and golden expressions. I mean, they, they make themselves appear to be all-knowing or very wise or very knowledgeable of the word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. but it says that they will deceive simple souls. Right. Simple souls. So I found... Um, some scriptures related to that. I won't go into all of them. Galatians 6 and 12 would describe that. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. Yeah. I think we uh -huh. said yeah, that. We mentioned Romans that. 16, verses 17 and 18. Good. So that was pretty much all I had. Um, that last one was something that I feel very uh, strongly about. Yeah. You know, because yes. we... we we search for the wrong ministers. Mm -hmm. Time and time again, have we seen where we want to choose a king? You know, like they did mm -hmm. back in, in, mm -hmm. in biblical times. They mm -hmm. wanted to be the ones to choose a king. God was not mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And to me today, we say, God, a regular loving pastor is not enough. We need someone to cut up there. We need someone to deliver the word like this. We need, we need this to happen this way. God's word is strong enough by itself. If it's not working for you in that way, it's because something's not working with your belief. Right. It's not the messenger. Right, it's not the messenger. It's your belief. It's your belief. Mm -hmm. I agree. So we're checking the wrong things. If you mm -hmm. need 
uh, entertainment, if you need excitement, if you need singing, if you need all this thing to boost you up and compel you to do something that you may or may not do, <laughs> which is believe, then something's wrong mm -hmm. in their area. Right. Right. I agree. So that's, I agree. that's all I have today. Yeah. Let me let me get through a, mm -hmm. a few more at least try to get halfway through that that list and then be and then I could finish up okay, the rest of ahead. it quickly on the uh, next time and then we can get into another subject on that yeah. next um, mm -hmm. thing. Number eight was um, it says that they are filthy dreamers and it, it means that false teachers are filthy dreamers who defile their body. This means two things. The first thing it means that false teachers engage in the pleasures of the world, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. Yes. Then the second thing is that it means that the false teachers sometimes claim to have visions and dreams from the Lord that are not from Him. Yeah. They use their visions and dreams to secure the following and loyalty of, of people. That, was, that goes along with what you said about them being men pleasers. You know, they're worried about uh, getting people to, to be on their side and, yes. and follow them a, a certain way. They they want to please people. They're not, they're not going to actually say the right things, even if it's something hard, you know, to say mm -hmm. say to people. They're, they're going to say things that, that make them uh, be closer to them and be able to follow them even further astray. Mm -hmm. Number nine was that um, they reject authority. <laughs> <laughs> I had that as well. And that's a that's just straight out that speaks for itself. They reject yeah. authority. Yes. yes Number yes. ten was um, they scoff at spiritual beings, yeah. which they scoff at uh, well, you know yeah. spiritual yeah. angels and, and such. Yes. False teachers scoff at the yes. idea of angels and of spiritual beings, okay. in particular of Satan and other fallen angels. Yeah. This is definitely the meaning of this trait. Uh, and that that's found in Jude the uh, ninth and tenth verses where it talks about false teachers speak against doubt and question spiritual mm -hmm. beings such as angels and the cherubim and the seraphim. They ridicule the ideas of Christ and angels and other spiritual beings mm -hmm. living in a spiritual world. Mm -hmm. They question whether there are beings in a spiritual world who are living and functioning just as we are in this world. Okay. They are after the way of Cain. That's number 11, mm -hmm. which is of unbelief. Right. Let me find where it, it talks a little bit about that. That because uh, there were quite a few scriptures. Let, let me go back first and then uh, just list a few scriptures for uh, people to read um, in their uh, spare time that, that deal with, with this. Um, Ephesians 6 and 12, you know, mm -hmm. which tells us about wrestling with, uh, um, you know, spiritual things as opposed to flesh and blood. And then uh, Colossians 1 and 16 also tells you something uh, similar to show you that there is a spiritual realm. Right. Um, there are Colossians 2 and 15 also says, says things about mm -hmm. this. And, uh, and uh, right here... Um, some scriptures that'll kind of tell you uh, uh, about them uh, dealing with spiritual being is Matthew 6 and 23, John 3 and 19, Romans 10 and 13, and 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. <coughs> Ephesians 4 and 16 also, and 1 John, 1 chapter and 6 verse, and Jeremiah 4 and 22. Mm -hmm talks about people making a foolish mistake when they um, talk about spiritual things mm -hmm. uh, as, as if they're, they don't exist or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the, number 11 was they go after the way of Cain which is unbelief and it said false teachers go after the way of Cain the way of unbelief and lack of godly love. Cain committed the very first murder on earth. He killed his own brother. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Abel was a believer. Abel believed God that he was to worship God exactly like God said by the blood of a sacrificial animal. Yes. Cain did not accept such a belief. 
he felt that if he brought the fruit of his own hands to God, then God would accept him because of his hard work and because he worshiped and gave offerings to God. God accepted Abel's worship and offering. It was evident in his life by the way God blessed him mm -hmm. and took care of him. But God rejected Cain's offering. Mm -hmm. Cain did not have a real sense of God's care or blessing upon his life. Therefore, he became jealous and envious of Abel, and he killed Abel. Mm -hmm. Three things are being said about false teachers. One of them is that false teachers do not believe God, that a person has to worship God exactly like God says mm -hmm. by the blood of Jesus Christ. False teachers do not love like God says to love. Right. False teachers right. shall be destroyed. Those are the three things about false, false teachers that were mentioned with, the, with that uh, number 11. Okay. If you want to, we can, we can stop right here and then try to finish the, the last 11 of those. Yeah, I um, think I'm, I think time. I'm pretty much and, uh, good. And then we'll do some more stuff. Well, I'll go over them real fast. Mm -hmm. The next time, the, the, the remaining 11 uh, parts of uh, characteristics that I, I found uh, in those classes, we'll just have to remember that we're going to start at number 12 okay. out of the 22 uh, uh, characteristics. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll go forward, forward from from there and then we'll also jump into one of the questions and uh, uh, I'll go real fast so we can have time to jump into one of our first questions. You really want to get outside. to that, don't you? Yeah, I want to get you to really some of those questions, you know, because they, they were things when they talk about forgiveness and, and uh, you know, and then being able to uh, um, convince your, your, your children not to have too much pride in themselves and things like that. I think that uh, those, those are things that we really need to address too, you know, yeah. just like we, we need to on these false teachers. Right. That's why I really want to finish that, that part out yeah. of those last uh, uh, 10 uh, mm -hmm. little uh, parts or the last 11 little parts of uh, uh, those characteristics mm -hmm. of uh, false teaching. But uh, I think it was a, a good lesson. I mean, you you, you yeah. pointed out some things, and I, I mean, I like the way yeah. they kind of coincide, you know, when you really look at those things, mm -hmm. and we found them uh, from different spots, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's what God does. He confirms his word more than one time in, yes, in these situations, mm -hmm. so he makes it clear for us. Uh, there, are, there are times in the Bible where we uh, seek out just one scripture, mm -hmm. but there's always somewhere else that he confirms those those things to you mm -hmm. so that you won't just be uh, caught up in just what one scripture is saying you right. know it, it, it can almost confuse you or or lead you to think right. in an mm -hmm. uh, improper way but you know but, God wouldn't leave you in that situation no he wouldn't leave you in that situation he gives yeah. you some more yeah. more stuff in there you just got to be digging you know you right. just got to got to do do what we're trying to do here right. you know is is dig but um we we uh really enjoyed this uh this lesson yes, uh, again. I did. You know, we're 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 gonna take it we, we take our time on the these lessons and, and we go as long as we need to go because this is important stuff that we're discussing here. Yes. And we really have this desire to get this um message across to to not only our church members but whoever, you know, gets an opportunity to listen to yeah. to some of this. If the, the Lord, my prayer is that the Lord will lead people mm -hmm. that way to go ahead and pull it up. Even even people that we didn't didn't expect, you know, to, right. to go ahead and, and, and look at some of these lessons and, and, and such. So uh, before we get off of here, I just want to, to uh, go ahead and uh, tell everybody to please continue to pray for the Bradley family and yes. and for Miss Shabba's family and the loss of her her mo mother and uh, with that uh, service happening on this this weekend, her family really needs uh, needs our prayers mm -hmm. and uh, our considerations about what they're going going through mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's it's my my uh, prayer that uh, that everybody will remember to go ahead and, and list them in their their prayers for encouragement. And all of our sick and our, our, our shedding in and uh, diff different people in our church, I mean, 
I thought about Sister Dixon uh, the other day. I, I need to reach back out to her and, and, and call her uh, again and check on her. I hadn't heard from her, and I kind of get these withdrawal symptoms when I have heard from her yeah. in a little while yeah. where I need to uh, reach out to them. And I, I, I want us to also remember uh, Deacon Birkins. Uh, I need to reach out to him, too, as well. I hadn't talked to him in a, in a while, and I have wondered uh, and want everything to be okay with him and his family and and, uh, and his, his wife and, and such. So uh, you, you have any last parting words or anything that you wanted to say? I don't know. Oh, okay. We love you okay. guys, and yeah. we hope to see you soon. So yes, we, we hope to see you very soon. We we praying for that too. <laughs> but only With in God's time, you know, but yeah, we miss you. And please pray for all of all of the people going through this riot rioting and, yes, and everything and, and we pray for their safety yeah. and yeah. in the situations and we pray that this unjustness mm -hmm. dissipate too, that it, it go away. What yeah. whatever this that's evil good. thing uh, that based good. on race and, yeah. and, and and things we we want all of that to be uh, canceled out too in our mm -hmm. lives live. so we're gonna we're gonna go into prayer prayer for those things as well you know yeah. um, so we 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 thank y'all for uh, tuning in to the heart to heart one one more time we thank you for allowing us to invite you into our home and also into our hearts yes Thank you for uh, watching this, this broadcast, and may God bless you.